Welcome to EdTech Weekly, episode 200. 200! This is, uh, what do we do? We do this uh, <laughs> educational technology webcast thing every Sunday night in North America, and uh, today is September 25th, 2011, and this is John Schinker in Stowe, Ohio. This is Dave Cormier in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And this is Jeff Lebo in Pusan, Korea, saying we do it every week, not only in North America. We, we webcast in the whole, whole world. Everybody? Everybody. Can, no, we don't do it America on Sunday world. night in Korea. Oh, Sunday Jeff. night in North America. Is that what you said? Sunday night in North America is what I said. Okay. You would think wow, after 200 guys, times we would not before. screw this up. That's amazing. I think well, you guys you know, did that on purpose. Ever since we changed the format, the introductions are a lot harder because you used to have it down. It's a fast-paced blah, blah, blah. And now it's, we don't know what it is. So what Plus, is it this week? What's the plan this week? The plan this week is uh, talk about ourselves for a while and then talk about ourselves some more and then talk about last week's show and then talk about us. Yeah, and last week's Sound show good? we should mention was our uh, Google Plus examined show uh, after which all sorts of major changes came out and I was really tempted to go back in and add some audio so I could look really prophetic. You know, I think there's some major changes coming down soon from Google+. Plus. But What you could have said was everything you're complaining about will change this week. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's still one thing that hasn't changed. Um, and we'll we'll get to this stuff uh, later, I guess. Or do you and want, I should want just, to do it now? We should just mention that uh, if things look a little different, that's because we're now using Google Plus with extras. What is extras? Tell us about that, Jeff. Extras I is I've never includes done extras. screen sharing and application sharing, and I think that's about it for now. Um, it's a but it's not what it's not broadcasting yet. Right. No. Is it well, that's on air. Right. And on air is um, select people only. And that Did was you launched. see Jeff panic when he thought that nobody was able to hear us right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was launched by Will I Am uh, last Wednesday. They had the first on air, which basically is going to make everything that we've been doing technically for the last six years weep. <laughs> the webcasters. You have been just doing click, it click, and do it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to involve streaming and recording, which is awesome. Right. That's great. So, so yeah. with a Hangout, you can, you know, in addition to doing a video conference where you have what as many participants as you want, or as many people as 10. you know, or something, 10, 10, whatever. So you can have 10 people in a video conference, and then you can work together on a shared document. You can dump stuff in there so that other people can see it. You have a text chat that's available for everybody who's in the audio conference. So you can, you know, even though someone else is speaking, you can point some things out there. And uh, can we record yet? No, not with extras. Okay. So I'm showing in the stream. Um, you've got notes, sketch pad, and then any documents that you want to add. And you can screen share those. I actually used this uh, last week with my, my online course, and it worked quite well. How many students do you have? Less than 10. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and hey, so the ability to, to broadcast is, yes, it is. Cool. Ability to broadcast is coming up and the ability so you can do all the stuff that EdTech Talk's been doing for years. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was listening to uh, This Week in Google this week, and they're all excited about this ability to be able to broadcast. And they said, well, all the stuff that Leo's doing uh, on the Twit Network where he has you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in studio equipment and people and TriCasters and video switches and all of that stuff can be done automatically with this Google tool. And, you know, of course, my first reaction is, well, Jeff's been doing this for six years now without, you know, any money really. Um, so it's always been possible. It's just something that is now in the hands of anybody who cares to do it. You know, everybody's uh, a broadcaster. Everybody can have their own radio show or their own video show or whatever they want. Which is nice because it really, as one of the things I think we might mention it later tonight, it's not about the technology, it's about the content. And I think this is a huge leap forward uh, toward that end as far as streaming your, your content goes. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do sort of in the background to... Uh, to, to get to that level where the technology can be transparent, I think that the changes that they've made have been really exciting, and they're all the things that I would have chosen. You know, the ability to have 
10 people, the, the problem with using something like Illuminate or Breeze or as we saw in our disastrous big blue button event last week um, is that you don't really actually want 150 guests in your live broadcast. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, you want four or five or six or seven, probably less than 10. And then you need the rest of the people to be able to see a broadcast and, right. you know, maybe participate in a chat room. And it looks like the way that Google Hangout is going is it's actually going to be able to, it's going to do exactly that, right? I don't know how the shared chat room thing would work out, but, I mean, you could fake it if you had to. But it's, it's really exciting because it means that you don't have to do the, the big weight stuff. I mean, this is what the guys in the, the MOOC this summer tried to do, right? They used the 10-person um, Illuminate room or whatever it was, and then live webcasted that to a different location and showed people from there and scoped up a page to put a chat room next to it, which allows you to deal with the, the scale, right? That's how they handle the scale issue. Um, but this would allow you to do that without having to figure out any of those things. And that's really, that's really cool. Yeah, a couple Plus questions. You get that slideshows of my kids. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful kids. Do we know, um, are, are people who are going to be viewing the Google Live on air Hangout thing, are, th are they going to have to have Google Plus accounts in order to no, see this? No, my understanding is, is it... they're using YouTube. The stream okay, YouTube. so basically wow. if you have access to YouTube, um, you'll be able to catch the stream. Which means if you nice. have access to the internet, yeah. And I mean, just in well, this week... not in a school, though. <laughs> um, that's a good point. Um, yeah. This week, you know, we saw an interesting contrast of these Google Plus rollouts and the Facebook rollouts. And Google Plus, I, I think, has done a much better job of responding to users' needs and wants. And they seem to be actively listening and adjusting. Listening to our happen. show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Right. Whereas right. Facebook seems to be following the Microsoft model of how can we make things more difficult for our users? How can we tell them what we think they want rather than actually listen to what they do want? I'll go further than that and say they're following the Microsoft model and doing the oh, those guys seem to be getting a lot of good press for that. Let's do something really similar. Right, right. Without the tech, actually thinking tech about press how... Is talking about how wonderful Google Plus is, and so we have to have all of these features in Facebook, forgetting that we already have the 800 million people. So they're exactly. already here. Yeah, that's right. And, and that, you know, they're very, they're very different tools. And the, the, the creativity that you guys could have and the things you could do if you had eight, access to 800 million people... I'm just not seeing that from them. You know, I'm not yeah, seeing yeah. the sort of the creativity that's um, that's possible yeah. given the un unprecedented scale that they're at. And know? everything there they do just has that feel of like, let's make this change and see how we can make some more money out of it. And they just feel <laughs> sleazier. Like Google Plus, I'm sure, you know, they've got financial motives or whatever else, but it just feels different to me. Well, they want you in the Google products, right? If you're using Google Plus for your social network, first of all, you're not using Facebook, which means that Google has access to that data. When you draw all these connections between all these people that you know, and this is the stuff I'm sharing with these people, Google knows all that stuff now. And that means Facebook doesn't, so they're, they're not only... Um, getting that information that they can use to better tailor services to you and advertise it to you, but they're also withholding that information from another competitive service. Um, the other thing is that it makes it much easier to use other Google products. Because we're in Hangout with Extras here, I can share my Google Doc with this group. Well, if I'm not using Google Docs, that becomes a disadvantage for me. So if I'm in Microsoft Live 360, whatever that crazy product is, and all my documents are there, then it's less useful for me. And so this is encouraging me to jump on there. It's, it's encouraging me to use Picasa instead of using Flickr because it's easier to share yeah. your photos. So they want you in the Google world. And once you're in the Google world, then they start making real money. And frankly, I want to yeah. be in the Google world. I like the Google world. Um, and Kathy raises a good point in the chat room about Google Apps uh, because it is not Google Plus, hence Google Hangouts are not yet available for Google Apps. So if you have your domain hosted by Google like schools do. Right. Google Apps for Education, Google Apps for Business, Google Apps for My Domain, basically all of the Google Apps services that you can manage yourself with your own domain, um, don't support profiles. And profiles are required for... Uh, 
uh, Google Plus. And that's, this is something that came up the day Google Plus came out because you have a lot of corporate ent entities or um, you know, other entities that have their own domains on Google, not just in education, who said, we're huge supporters of Google. We actually pay for this service because if you're not education, you do have to pay for it. And we can't access this cool new tool that you're launching with much fanfare and a lot of hype and people were really excited about it. We can't use it in our domain. And Google's response to that was, yes, we know and we're working on it and it was it was really I think the the number one thing or perhaps the number two thing um, that people were complaining about Google Plus from from the launch and we haven't heard anything about it really since then so I don't know when if how that's coming because um, they ahead. seem pretty concerned that they want real people to be using Google Plus and not that Google apps yeah. aren't real people but it's not the same I don't know. Well, they don't have the control yeah. over the users. Um, um, just to address the ad issues, people are saying, hey, why are there banner ads in the live stream? Because they're unavoidable and we're using something for free. And we, I think we could pay like 200 a month or something and get rid of them, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. He said he had a 30-second inline ad. Really? Inline like a video ad or a little banner ad? No, I'm thinking like he's saying he had a 30 video. second interruption. Ooh. That's why we left Ustream. Complete video. That's not cool. Mm, so. So Google. All right, well, what? Please. Yeah. <laughs> on your hangout. Quickly. Do we know when this is going to be available? No, they don't tell us those things. They do it when okay. they want to do it. I, okay. And it depends if you're special. They're only going to give it to special people. Uh, and if you're watching the video now, you can always switch to the audio, which I guarantee you will not have any ads in it. Yeah. Um, what else has changed in Google Plus since we last talked about it last week? Search. We got search, right? Yeah, which is huge. Which is, yeah, something that really ought to it's have a, been a there from the It's a big usability thing. I mean, when I'm searching for people or I want to search for certain posts or or, uh, or go back and find stuff. Like, oh, I know someone posted something about that on Google+. Plus. Makes it much easier to find. Mm -hmm. And that was one of Dave's big thing. He, you know, I don't, I don't understand how Google, the search engine giant, can. So if you want, I can try right. to edit that out last week, Dave. They, um, they were listening. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I just can't believe how quickly they develop. I said it on Sunday. It came out Monday. It was unbelievable. And you compare it to like a Twitter, and there certainly haven't been too many scalability issues. Yeah, well, that's right. it too. Right. Eh? Yeah. Oh, and fail the whale. Cool I miss the fail whale. Um, the these Hangouts now can go mobile, so on your Google Plus app on your smartphone, someone could join us here. Yes, and I have. I tried that. And it worked really well. In fact, I was I was in my office, so it wasn't the crappy internet that we have at home. And uh, it was after school, so or it was a non-school day actually. So there weren't any students in the school district. I still had better audio on my phone than I had on uh, my desktop computer in my office. So can you, you know, DM me really the link? Well. DM, DM you the link to what? Where should I DM you? Oh yeah, send him the uh, just paste it in in the chat. Which chat? Can't you just... It's in the group chat. Like you need it on... Or... No, I want it he, needs some... he needs it somewhere where you can Twitter. click on it. Yeah, DM me on Twitter. I'll, I'll DM I'll you do on it. Twitter. Okay. I'll do it. You got it. Thank you. I suppose um, I could have oh. DM myself. But and the, the other uh, big change, which was another one of our big criticisms last week, is it's no longer invite only. That's right. And you know that very morning I had just given away, you know, one of my invitations. So I was down to 149. Briefly. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Should we do the Google Plus topic first? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Let me talk Tracy. About How my... are you today? Go ahead, John. I want to hear your real world. Let me real talk world about problem. my real world problem here. Uh, and one of the things that Dave had talked about doing this season on in Tech Weekly is is talking to teachers and school technology people who have real 
um, needs, real things that they're working on that they need help with technologically, and that uh, they can come to us and uh, Dave will solve all of their problems and tell them what they should do and, and how they should go about it. Um, and, and there are lots of, of places where people in our group here that Dave or Jeff or Jen or, or me or, or someone else that we get on a call can um, can talk from experience about about things people are trying to do so one of the things that has come up for me is that my school district has a technology committee and it's a committee that's made up of teachers and some principals and curriculum directors and computer lab aides basically everybody in, in the school district is represented who who's a stakeholder there except students uh, oddly enough and, and we'll get to that in a minute uh, there's some parents on the committee and that sort of thing it's it's uh, I try to keep it around 12 people and it has varied from like 10 to 15 people and we meet monthly during the school year and typically those meetings end up being late uh, we start at you know, our high school gets out at 2.30, but we start these meetings at like 4 o'clock because of the elementary schools. They go an hour, so we have an hour a month. And this group does the technology planning for the district. Uh, they advise on policy issues. Uh, we have lots of discussions about professional development, um, about the future of education, about transforming education um, with technology, about, uh, you know, intervention, um, tech integration, support all of these kinds of things so you know they're the ones who say it's more important that we uh, get projectors in every classroom than uh, say upgrading to gigabit or they're the ones who say we need to increase the amount of storage space we have or we need to you know replace this computer lab or that sort of thing so it's basically an advisory committee for technology um, my problem is uh, one hour meeting once a month usually devolves into somebody's pet peeve. So people, you know, one person is upset about something. And why are the keyboards so dirty? Well, yeah, why are the keyboards so dirty? How come the teachers in my school, uh, you know, don't know how to solve their own email attachment problems or they don't know we how to We shouldn't have to fix people's email printer. accounts. Right, all of this stuff. And, it, you know, some, something like that will come up and then meeting gets off track and and we complain about professional development and whatever um, have you tried using a taser hmm tasers hmm. how are these meetings organized is there are you the chairperson of the There's, committee or anything yes i'm a chairperson of the committee i i develop the agenda i try to keep them on the agenda um but i also have enough flexibility that people can bring other things to the table and so they they do what I'm what I'm thinking is that if we did didn't have these meetings um, or didn't have as many of these meetings and these are meetings that are an hour long once a month late in the afternoon if we could find another way to do this where things were more topic focused and we could participate more at our leisure so that we're not you know there late in a, in an afternoon that we're you know teachers are participating during their conference planning periods in the mornings on the weekends whenever they want um, so so more of more of an asynchronous way to attack some of these problems and some of these issues and discussions and also kind of focus them better um, but I don't know exactly what tool I should use to do that or how I should organize that I asked them about Google Plus and the response that I got, I, I sent out a survey to all of the people on the committee, and about a third of them said they have no idea what I'm talking about, um, and about a third of them said I, that looks interesting, but I don't really know enough about it, and the other third said basically I have an account, I don't see what the fuss is about. So uh, what I'm wondering is should I put them into something like Plus and try to manage this group that way where we would have uh, discussions that are part of a larger, larger social network or larger would these um, be opened up, or they would just be limited to that circle? Well, it could be either way. I think it would initially be that circle, but then also, you know, making much of that public so that other people can participate in this process. This could be a larger group than it is currently, um, giving more people some input and getting um, perspectives from more people. It would probably stay within the school district, but it wouldn't necessarily just be limited to these people. Well, I know that you have a, a number of problems in terms of access and stuff. Do they have access to the Google Apps Suite? They do. 
It, okay. and, but one of the issues is we have Google Apps for Education. So they all have Google Apps accounts. They all understand Google Apps. Our email is through Google or through Gmail. The problem is, as we just mentioned, uh, Google Plus isn't available for Google Apps for Education. So we would be talking about setting up separate Google accounts just to do this. Can you tell me a little bit more about the meetings themselves, how your agendas are structured and stuff? Usually there are some informational items that I provide at the beginning, so status on current projects, an update on uh, generally at the beginning of the year we set priorities um, and, and so I will go through that priority list and, and let them know where we are on, you know, say printer quotas or um, uh, hardware upgrades or whatever. And then usually there's an item or two for discussion. Um, and those are generally policy-based kinds of things. And then at the end, we have the opportunity for them to bring anything to the table that they that they want. At what point do uh, I go off topic? Is it that last portion? The meetings, people? well, it, it could be anywhere in that meeting. Um, sometimes they'll they'll have a question about a current, you know, somebody will have a question about one of the, the current things that we're working on and then that kind of gets sidetracked. Or sometimes we will have, um, you know, in the in one of the discussion areas, you know, something that, that is perhaps relevant, but, um, you know, not necessarily something that we want to spend the whole hour on. And it, you know, sometimes there are things that we really need to talk about, but I do limit the meeting to 60 minutes. So once we're done, we're done. Right. Um, so I guess I'm I am uh, several committees like the one you describe, um, and and it is a bit of a frustration I think trying to get those done. I'm assuming that everybody has those same challenges. I think the, mm -hmm. the biggest reason why those challenges are there is because there's always too much to deal with and it's never enough time. I have just posted one of my suggestions. Um, <laughs> um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with farm machinery, that's a cattle prod. Um, that's my preferred way of keeping, keeping meetings on tasks. What we've done actually, and this is not a huge technology solution, but it's one that's been really, really effective for us, is we use a rolling agenda. So we have one Google Doc that we never change. One file, one document. That's our constant agenda. So every meeting we work on the same agenda. We encourage people to answer every question they can in the agenda before we arrive. So the meeting actually starts before that day. Mm -hmm. So great credit and kudos are given to people who take five minutes to go in and go, oh, I know the answer to that question. It's this. Can you take the cattle proud off? We'd like to see you. Oh, come on. Listen, you can't give me a new toy and not expect me to play with it. <laughs> I like the idea of being able to punctuate my uh, my topics with uh, with imagery. It's nice. Um, so I I found so what happens then is that there's a couple of things that really come out of this. One, when we keep going over the same topic over and over again, it becomes really clear as time goes on that we're wasting our time. So if the topic comes up and it's the same one and you're, you put it in, you go, oh, we actually have a section for that. Oh, look, we've covered this like six months ago. And the, I'm we've sorry, the Google been... Doc expands, so you have last yeah. month's meetings content there. No, no, but it's not even last month's meeting. It's only topic-based. It doesn't matter when the meeting was, right? So for a lot of these things, they're rolling conversations. But right. if you get rid of that conversation, you're just going to have it again. Whereas if you've got somebody <laughs> taking, and essentially you enforce discipline, through the note taking because we do all of our note taking on the screen so we throw up the the notes right so we have an agenda we write our minutes in the agenda right the agenda is on the wall and ideally people have written to the Google Doc before and you'll sort of start to scan down you're like oh so people have already answered that we've covered this topic already yeah. oh we're on this topic that we never cover is this gonna be the week we get it no we're gonna skip it but it's always there it never goes away so I find that really, really helpful for the kinds of meetings where if you guys had 50 hours, you still probably wouldn't cover all the things that you could. Sure. Right. 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 And that's nice because you avoid, like, if you use something like Google Groups or some form, you wind up with this constant repetition of points that have already been made. And with the Google Doc, oh, it's right, right here, check this section. Yeah. And I was I was thinking if if we integrated this with 
with plus, that would be cool if they were already in plus. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to integrate it with Facebook just because Facebook is used as a social thing for so many people that it, I don't think it would, would mesh well there. I had thought about using Moodle and setting up a Moodle course and having, you know, sort of virtual meetings there and collecting documents, but it seems much more top down and I wanted something that's a little more collaborative. And with Hangouts, I mean, you could share the doc. You could, yeah. although I'm trying to move away from, I mean, if we're all within, you know, three miles of each other. So if we're going to do synchronous, we'll get in a room. Yeah, I know. That's Not to much better. The typing noises would drive me crazy. It's, well, it's and way, they would way all easier call to because their webcams don't work, and because you know there there would be so many tech issues that we get in the way. Mm. It's easier to just get in a room. It's way easier to enforce discipline. However, you're doing it when you're face to face, you can you know take True. the space in the room. I find I find the rolling document really helpful uh, to answer. I don't know if Tracy was asking me whether or not I put time limits on topics in my meetings. I don't. Um, we've had I've seen having two meetings in a row where we dealt with a single topic and never got it done. But you know what? Some topics just take that long, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just like it's just like that. So for us, because none of the stuff we if we have something that's that's critical that has to be decided right away, it goes to the top of the agenda and we get it done. Other than that, we have things like um, we've gotten it set up now that for uh, anybody on campus can print to PDF and then choose whether or not it comes out as a file or um, or go to one of the sort of identified printers like the nearest one to where you are it took them forever to get mm -hmm. it done right because the the detail it sounds easy when you say it out loud but the details are actually kind of ugly what um, are your document editing policies like have you had any issues where someone is either editing it inappropriately or deleting stuff that other someone else did anything like that i have never in how long we've been doing this six seven years i have never had anybody delete a document inappropriately i've never seen it happen i've never seen it i had a actually i know of one case uh, of it ever happening and that's with a colleague at my university where I said he had to get 120 kids to pick their times for um, for their verbal um, uh, to their interview he had 120 students they all had to come in for like 10 minutes or something and he's like how am I gonna done these crazy solutions I said, put up a wiki and tell them to fill in the blanks And he goes there's no way I said you watch maybe one kid people once they're in public once they know there's lots of other people, almost everybody falls in the line. And sure enough, there was one yeah. kid, and two people complained, and the kid lost the... I don't think he even disciplined him. He just looked at him and went, are you kidding? Really? And the kid apologized and apologized to the other person it was over. Like, I don't even think he made a big deal out of well, it. Once you but, know who it is, and once they realize that every you know everything's tied to a user account, you know, Google yeah. Docs, you can go back to the revision history and say, who deleted this whole big... Set? Oh, it was Dave. But I, and not so much that the adults would be misbehaving, but you know, someone paraphrases what was discussed in a way that someone else doesn't agree with the paraphrasing. Well, what we do, we always we take the minutes live in the meeting, right? So if you're there and somebody's taking minutes on what you're saying and you're watching the minutes go in, pay attention, you know. And I've had that happen to me before. Now that I should say, who controls the minutes? like it has in any meeting. And this is something I learned. The more I spend time inside of corporations, the more I realize that minute taking is actually really important. Because um, you're we've, framing we've, the questions and the issues. Sure. And if you're, if you're in a policy, um, if you're on a policy committee, you're framing the policy, right? And I've seen, I, I know one person in particular who does a very, very good job of writing minutes so that they reflect his opinions on policy. Um, and it's it's almost it's laughed about in the committee meetings, but it's like, you did it again. That's not what I said. Are you sure? Now it may be a good idea, but that's not what anybody said. <laughs> yeah, I, I've um, been guilty of that as well. Where I I write the minutes for the meetings, and sometimes there are things that make their way into the minutes that didn't make their way into the meeting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and mostly the things that mostly they're on those first couple agenda issues, which are are always uh, informational, you know, status updates. Oh yeah, I, if if I had remembered, I would have told you that, you know, whatever. To sum up my feelings about working together in groups to try to get stuff done, I'm a firm believer in the group chat. Like I say, we've had a Skype chat here at EdTech Talk for three, four years. A group Skype chat 
text chat. I think they're fantastic. I think they're really good ways of managing simple day-to-day -day tasks. Um, and the Google Doc thing. I think I've never had live meetings work out. I don't know if that's because I'm incompetent, um, but the web-based meeting stuff, I've never had it work out because of the technical issues. Because you can't, you can't trust people to wear a friggin' headset. Just put on a headset. I told you, well, I, I don't, don't. I didn't have one. I didn't. I couldn't find it. I, I don't then know. Don't if, talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want live synchronous meetings. What I'm thinking is, can we go asynchronous with this? You know, is is it possible? Is it advisable? How much can asynchronous we get activity done? happens on those documents, Dave? A fair amount. A fair amount. But you really need to have them set up so that people do it as much to get a word in before the meeting. So it gives them a chance to get ahead of the thing, and and the truth is, is all the people on that on that committee are actually really busy. So it allows us to do updates. So when you're, oh well, what's going on with this project? Realistically, you could take five minutes and type it in, and we don't have to go. We can just kind of glance at it and go forward. Yep. And it controls that. Then you're stuff not spending too. twenty minutes talking about it, and then handing out a handout that says everything that you just told them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good okay. idea. Thank you. Awesome. Real life issue, real life solutions. Right. And I, I like that it's a, a management solution that, that Dave came up with there and not necessarily a, here's a tool that will fix this. Well, I mean, the tool is Google Docs. It's beautiful. And, and yeah. to me, the, the big mind bender for me was realizing that the document doesn't print, so it can keep changing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that was. I mean, sometimes when we look at things that have been around for so long, like agendas, we think of them as concrete items that Fixed. don't have any shift to them, right? Right. But in this case, it's just, I, I think there's long been something like a rolling agenda. It's just a lot tidier inside of Google Docs. And if mm -hmm. for some reason people didn't want to or couldn't, I stumbled across a tool <laughs> that you mentioned, tool, <laughs> that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> things like Titan Pad. Have you heard of Titan Pad? I, no. It's a very light web-based Google Doc alternative. Vance uses it. And I said, why do you use this instead of Google Docs? He said it's lighter and works on slower connections and is very easy. Uh, so I'll toss that out of the chat room since, you know, for old time's sake, it's our 200th anniversary. We should mention at least one tool. <laughs> um, so... Do we? Uh, it is our 200 show. We did say we were going to talk about it a little bit. Um, I think it's great that we've made it to 200, and I miss Jen. I don't really have anything else to say other than that. Uh, I miss Jen too, of course. And I thought that we were going to do, you know, 200, the top 200 of 200 shows. Fast Ready, pace. Go. Go. <laughs> Skype, 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 Skype. <laughs> Terry, 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 Skype. You still like Skype? I still use it. Um, so I have, those, I have... Go ahead. Well, for those who don't know, uh, 100 episodes ago for our 100th show, we did our top 100 links of the previous 100 shows, which is what I'm referring to there. Go ahead, Dave. So um, we were talking at the start of the show. I have my own sort of collaborative project that I'm working on right now, and we talked a little bit about this last week, but I would like some input from you guys. Um, I have a wiki project that I'm doing right now. I have eh, maybe 20 people in it. Um, it turns out that MediaWiki sending emails from my server goes into everybody's spam box. Thank you very much. Um, took a while before I figured that out, but it does. It, it, I didn't think people were very interested, and then they started complaining that they hadn't been invited, which... Because I've gone, because it's MediaWiki, I've gone with invite only. I'm having people actually call me and say, "I want to be part of the project," and then I'm actually going in and making their accounts by hand. Um, two reasons for that: one, I think it creates more of a sense of commitment in people when they ask you to register, and it allows me to sort of know when people are registering and who they are and stuff. Uh, and also, MediaWiki is just a freaking spam attractor, so not letting people uh, have accounts without me knowing who they are and following them on Twitter means that uh, I don't get any spam, which can really be a pain. Um, so what I've got right now is uh, there's somebody who set up this wiki and he did a really, really bad job organizing it. You might recognize him. He's right here. 
Um, <laughs> so given that, um, what I need to do is organize people on a, on a sort of weekly basis. We need some kind of touchstone. And I'm trying to decide whether or not, you know, I can just tweet them out, like with a special tag with some stuff, whether or not I should actually set up live events where I say, okay, it's time for the ebook meeting for us to get together and chat about it. Whether or not I should do like a weekly screencast or something. I don't know. I'm looking for some feedback here. How do I keep, I've got an engaged community. I've got some people doing a lot of work right now. It's really great. It's the first week. But I need to get some kind of rhythm going and I'm not sure quite how to do that. Wow, good question. Um, I, I think that I, I would try to stay asynchronous as much as you can. Um, John, what happened to your webcam? Trying to get 25 people together all at the same time, especially when they're scattered all over the world, is, is probably something that you're not going to be able to do. Um, can you use comments in the discussion page to try to organize that? Or all, all happening. Put there are comments in every discussion page. People are chatting back and forth, popping in ideas. We have a the first section of the front page of the wiki is the work list. So anybody has work that needs to be done, they put it there. When people are done with it, they take it and move the dot to now dot. Well, they put their signature next to the thing they're working on, and then when they're mm -hmm. done with it, they copy it to the discussion page to the work completed list. Mm -hmm. So we've got all these sort of things that we've developed on the fly on how to do it, and it seems to be okay. What I'm worried about is this stuff drifting over time you know we gotta go for 35 weeks it's a long long time to keep that many people together you know? um, I'm sorry hard. to interrupt a couple things John your webcam is gone uh, I could turn that back on were yeah. you doing something secretive there were kids coming in oh uh, and the other thing is I'm trying to invite people for our 200th I thought invite people into the hangout I don't want to see how hangout with extras handles it I'm not having success inviting people. When I click the little invite button next to our webcams on the side, then it disappears and I guess get one large picture of whoever's talking. So Google Plus, please make that better. Fix it. Just okay. fix it. Spe okay, now back to fixing Dave's real life issue. Aren't you going to comment on that, Jeff? Um, I still think you should have used Google Docs. One doc for each module or unit or chapter. Uh, no spam. Uh, but that's not the crux of the issue, right? The crux of the issue is how do you... For those you of you who are wondering, together. Jeff is actually on a ball. <laughs> he's, he's sitting on a ball. And that's why he's bouncing up and down like that in the video. So just Earthquake. just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> um. <laughs> so opinions like that aside, Jeff. Even if you were in Google Docs, it wouldn't change the fact right. that I need to touch base with people all the time. Is there yeah, any kind I mean, of hierarchy I, or leadership emerging? It's Dave's project and everything else is just... Helping. There are people who are doing a lot more work, do, doing more work than others, clearly. Um, there are people who are more comfortable making uh, suggestions for decisions than others, but it's pretty early. Pretty right. early. You, know? <clears throat> you, you have two issues here. One is you want everyone to be included and everyone to feel like they have been empowered to contribute and say, no, this is wrong, this should be done this way, even though it's different from what uh, has been previously suggested. And, and I think that's something that's difficult to overcome where, you know, if I were in this group, and thankfully I'm not, but if I were in this group, I would be, <laughs> you know, am I, do I have the credibility to say this about, you know, using cell phones in education? Can I summarize these experts this way? Can I, um, can I suggest that these resources or these blog posts or these tweets are perhaps more relevant than these other ones? Uh, you know, I, I would have a problem with that. You know, just having, I don't have the authority to make these decisions. I don't have 
uh, the expertise really in this subject area to be able to say what is important and what's not important. So I think, you know, getting them to the point where you value them or they, they think that you value them to the point where they can contribute and, and have those con contributions be you know, valuable, validated parts of the, of the finished product, I think is important. Now, how you do that, I have no idea. What? All that and I get nothing? <laughs> <laughs> all that blah, 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 and I get nothing at the end. Just a big I've pile learned, of... I've learned from the master. <laughs> um, what are you trying to say? Uh, yeah, just leave that where it is. <laughs> Have you seen anything comparable to this work? And if so, how? What systems did they use? I've never seen... I mean, I know that they did uh, the... Uh, what was it called? Um, something education, debunking education. Oh, it's a big project. Still going on. I've seen a couple of things, but nothing really like this. You know me. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to try this idea. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, God, now I have this big project. Um, so, no, I haven't seen any examples of it. It's not to say that they don't exist. Um, I mean, I think you need some leadership, some directives. And either needs to come from you or uh, a group of people who somehow get selected to play some role. Um, you know, I mean, the example that comes to my mind is Wikipedia. Uh, and that's largely policy driven, but you have a core group that's determining key issues of going forward. Yep. Do you interact with these people individually about this project or just collectively um, well both um, kinda when you in the discussion areas of the, the those discussions are starting to evolve right. now so so Brett's gonna go in and sign his name on a question and I'm gonna respond directly to him so kind of directly in that sense but right. collaboratively in another sense I mean, it's out I mean validation is good you know, if you can provide that publicly, but also I think privately, encouraging people to step up and you know, I've noticed that you haven't taken on anything. You know, starting I guess those conversations with with people about what what they think their role can be, and um, you know, almost giving them permission to mm -hmm. to go in and change stuff. Bye, yeah. Kathy. Thank yes. you for joining us. I don't know. Yep, yeah, gonna have to encourage people to do a little bit more. It's a good idea. And okay. I, I think some kind of um, either weekly screencast or hangout or something like that would serve the project well. And I think it would it would help generate interest from people who are not involved in the project and a little sense of even more ownership from those that are webcasting mm -hmm. good <laughs> webcasting good but not necessarily always practical no you know, especially if you want to get 25 people on that call you don't want 25 people on that call see and if you don't have that many people then you have a leadership group that is in charge and then other people working for them you want 25 people to have the option of joining in. You know, you'll be lucky if you have five show up. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Who's that? Well, we didn't really help you very much. Did you try to get in on your phone? Nope. That's yeah, it wouldn't let me in. I bet I could get in on my phone. Let me see. Google Plus. I, I, can you guys invite anyone? When you click on the little invite thing in the top right, do you have any success? I don't have an invite thing. Oh, yeah? Maybe. Like above the top webcam? Webcam? Invite with a Swiss flag? I, have my, my, I don't have a Swiss flag. I have a microphone, like video. I can mute my video. I can share my screen. Then I have... Uh, the gear 
and then exit. What about right below exit? Who would I you have... like me to invite? Oh, yeah, I'd have circle. invite. What's really, that? you have no trouble inviting people? Add circles. I don't know. I haven't tried to invite anybody yet. I bet but, if I left click, like it when would I click be that, all I get is an expanded webcam for whoever's talking. No, I can enter email addresses or pick a circle. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So what's my problem? Phew. That's next week's topic. Mm. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> oh well, next week we'll do the uh, tablets. Yep. If Jen yep. can join us. Unless uh, this other thing comes up. If I can get this person in, we'll do that, and then we'll put tablets the next week. He said something about um, uh, commitments in other things, and he's trying to rearrange his schedule to join us. So if, if he can actually do that, I would like to do that. Basically, we have a teacher who is trying to facilitate a uh, connection with an author for the entire grade level and wants to do a Skype chat and have students able to ask questions and... Um, you know, so it, it, it raises some complicated technical issues and hopefully we can help him come up with a plan that will actually work and not be fraught with disaster. Yeah, we can do that in five minutes. Probably. I'm the thinking fraught with disaster? Yeah, sure we can. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster's great. Awesome. I rock a disaster. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Matt. So, on that note, guys, I think uh, I think it's time to wrap this up. Uh, I can correct. Yep. It is wrapped so up. We're gonna try. Uh, no, doing this again next week. Properly. That, <laughs> consider this wrapped, folks. Come on. They they stopped listening a long time give ago. Give us another two hundred shows, man. We'll get this thing <laughs> <worked> out. <laughs>